Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Day Night Daily number 530, part 2. Ah, we are learning Bomber's ever so excellent Terran vs. Zerg style that's focused on heavy macro and defense in the early game, and then a big, big attack that happens around 15 minutes, whenever our 2-2 upgrade is done. So, one of the things that makes this build so effective is that you are getting 1-1 upgrades very, very early for your Marines, which of course leads to very early 2-2 upgrades, but we stay alive with Marines and Tanks. These Marines and Tanks will be used in our late army, in our big army attack. I want you to compare this with Hellion Banshee, which is the standard play that Terran players are doing nowadays. They go Hellion Banshee, they get their early 1-1, but they're dumping so much money into the Hellion Banshee that their marine tank army winds up being very, very small when that big 2-2 attack pops out. So, in this circumstance, sure, Zerg gets to do absolutely everything that he wants to do. But, because we built those marines and tanks so early for defense, we're not moving out with 50 or 60 2-2 marines and 6-7 to seven tanks. We're moving out with almost 100 marines and almost 10 tanks. It's really, really good. So let's come back and check this out. We stopped at the 10 minute mark to show. Doom, 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 doom. Stim was just starting. And a good rule for barracks is to build barracks in twos. We build these two, and then we, when they're finished, we build these two. And when these are finished, we're going to build two more. Upgrade complete. These, you see, as these ones finish up, we build two more. Also, note that we're just flooding with a whole bunch of these basic units, right? We're building marines as we can, we're building tanks as we can. Here's a tank that just popped out, and we're certainly building ourselves a lot of SCVs. Um, I'll note these little buildings over here. I don't want you to again think of this in terms of like, well, okay, at 94 food we get an extra factory and an extra starport. Just group things together. And I'll show you that when these, right when these upgrades are starting, this is when we do the biggest flood of units. We literally go plus two attack, plus two armor, three more barracks, factory, starport. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is where the biggest surge forward happens right when two, two goes down. And in fact, I think in a minute we actually Actually, just in a second here, we end up adding on these extra two geysers. I mean, pretty much everything. Yeah. You can think of 2-2 as the oh my god moment of this build order. Where we just go, oh god, 2-2 starting, get everything. Level 2 attack, level 2 armor, stims coming out of here. When this tech lab is done on this other barracks, we're going to get combat shield. And until this point in time, we're just building stuff. Now... As a pretty nice, easy trigger, right when these refineries wrap up, that's when you should start thinking about halting the SCV production. Right when these refineries wrap up, or more specifically, right around 12 minutes, that's when you start going, oh, maybe I should just stop building SCVs and focus only on unit production. And that's great. Add on. This better be good. Now, I will note that you, your goal is to end up with 9 to 10 barracks, 2 factories, and 1 starport. Most notably, um, what we're seeing is that the starport is stupid late. We're really not going to have that many medevacs at all. We're just going crazy stupid late. Also, the armory sneaks in a plus 1 attack upgrade. But, you know, just go ahead and start that whenever this little tanky guy, or this second factory guy, is starting to get finished. So we're seeing Bomber begin to move out. He's using all his supply depots as walls. And he starts heading up to the front. So let's go ahead and note some of the key things that we saw. All the supply depots are being used as walls. He's using siege tanks right here to defend against attacks at the front. He's had marines positioned at the back here, not missile turrets, but marines are positioned at the back against mutilisks. And likewise, we have a couple marines that are just out here. 
We also see that he is getting absolutely all tech lab, or excuse me, all reactors on these barracks, with the exception of the second barracks we built and the fifth barracks we built. Right as we start pushing out to the middle of the map, which is when 2-2 starts to finish up, we just get one more tech lab. We only have we only had these two tech labs, so that way we could get the um, stim and combat shield. But now that we have that, great. Look it up in the macro. Look at this. 64 SCVs. He's not going all the way on up to the... Um, he's not going all the way up to that money 75 that a lot of people try to go for. He's actually stopping a, a little bit earlier. And that's it. So I want you to note that at this point in time, if you are making a push at 14 minutes, you are in excellent shape. People talk about Stefano's 12 minute max. Well, Bomber has the 14 minute max, where he has plus two armor, he has plus two attack, stim, combat shield. And look at this. There's absolutely no command center anywhere. This is a three base all in. Great. Look, come to the unit tab with me. Two medevacs, very low on the medevacs. Nine tanks, stupidly high amount of tanks. A marauder, all right, cool, that's a marauder. And 75 marines, oh, that's so many marines. And in the production, we're making them like seven at a time. And in some circumstances, we can make them 15 at a time. I won't actually come to the bomber cam for a moment just to show you what bomber is selecting and where his screen vision is this is what makes this really easy look notice how bomber is just looking at his units and occasionally down here you'll see him select you'll see him occasionally select his macro button He's literally just looking at the battle. This is what makes this so easy. Ready this push is really off. intimidating. Additional All you really need to do is every now and again hit that barracks button and just hold A. Maybe a couple of rounds of D for some marauders. Research complete. But we have a lot of scans. We're not muling anymore. So we don't even need to go back for that. We're just conserving for scans. In fact, come to the unit tab. Look at that. One mule. Not a lot of mule. Still notice how all bombers really doing is stimming, selecting his units, and selecting his barracks. Now look at that supply tab, 174 to 131. After the battle's done, just snatches up any units that he didn't have, and goes to battle. This better be good. And bomber just is going to continue to drill. Stefano had all the opportunity in the world if he needed to build up his Mega Death Army. And if push one doesn't work, that's actually not a huge deal. So I will note that while we had this on, uh, while we had it all turned off, all the vision turned off just on Bomber, Stefano has had the opportunity to get himself four bases. Not really mining out of this one, but definitely mining out of this one. Stefano got the 75 workers. Stefano's gotten to construct himself very, very early 3-3 three, three upgrades. He's gotten to do all these things. And yet in the unit tab, what do we see? Two Ultralisks, an Infester, two more Infestors coming out, six Ultralisks. Bomber's push hits so early that even like a Zerg superstar like Stefano struggles to keep up with this count of units. So we saw that attack get brutally crushed and we feel sad about it. And yet, two minutes later, 52 marines, 13 marauders, 5 tanks. This is what I want to appeal to the young up-and-coming Terrans. It is so easy to watch Polt play, or to watch MVP play, or to watch uh, even an aggressive American player like QXE play, and to go, oh, I want to do that, I want to attack and drop, and I want to I wanna put pressure, I'll put tanks here and tanks there, I can put tanks, I can put so many tanks over there. You, you, you get these little fantasies of all these crazy things. But what I really want you to fantasize about is marine numbers. Mmm, 75 marines. And two minutes later, how many marines do I have? <gasps> 52. I could even have 75 marines again if I didn't build marauders, but I wanted the marauders too, and I got them, right? Oh! This. Yes. 
Oh god, just fantasizing about macro all day long. Mmm, those juicy, enormous unit counts. This sieging actually kind of sucks, to be entirely judgmental for this period of time. That sieging looked pretty dang bad. Bomber has not lost a food lead, his micro here botched horrifically. Like, real bad. I don't know if any of you saw that, but I mean, he, he literally anti kited He walked directly in front of the Ultralisks and just took maximum damage. But that's fine. You just keep building. Why does this work? Why is this so effective? Well, actually, before I before I ask that question, let me just show yet one more push. Explosions, explosions, taking out everything. In the unit counting station, yet again, a mere two minutes later, we're back to 52 Marines, 14 Marauders, 6 tanks. Oopsie daisies, I was mistaken. It's up to 60 Marines. Sieging up, stimming up. Look at how easy this battle went. Oh, no problem at all. Why does this work? Why does this work? I even saw people in chat going, Oh, this he's dead. He's totally screwed. But we saw, hmm, what is going wrong for Zerg here? I will show you with the use of this graph. Here's what's happening with this push. We first strike right in this period. Right in here where there's infestors but not really any hive tech. We can even come right back to the 14 minute mark where the push began. And the hive tech, hive is done but the adrenal glands might be the only thing we're even going to get the chance to do. In the unit counting station we don't have any ultralisks at all. We've only just started it. In fact, one Ultralisk in production, and in the gas count, we see Stefano's broke. In fact, all Stefano really has is some Infestors and Zerglings. And ordinarily, this wouldn't be a bad position for Zerg, right? I don't know if you guys can hear that car alarm, but that is breaking my freaking concentration. <laughs> but all we have are Infestors at this point in time. That's it. Infestors, but no Hive Tech. Stefano tech stupidly fast. Now, the reason this works is we're going to keep track of the energy on these infestors this whole time, and we're going to see that soon enough, Stefano runs out of infestor energy. That's what makes this so good, is that round one and two generally have a high failure rate in these attacks. So here's these infestors. They're spending a lot of energy on infestors, mass zergling. Ah, it didn't quite work. Here the only two infestors that Stefano has no fungals, no nothing. Stefano has to rely on just lanes and locals. Amazingly, Stefano is able to break through, but Stefano was not able to win that profitably. Okay, so we see more infestors in production. Infestors need a lot of time to recharge. This infestor was broke from battle one. A few minutes later, he's only been able to toss out a few infested Terrans. So sure, we win here, but this kiting business, oh gosh, now all of a sudden we can't actually engage on creep. Again, I want to note that process. In attack one, we're against the full force of Zerg. In attack two, we're up against the full force of Zerg minus infestors, so Zerg can't engage us on creep because he doesn't have any more infester energy. And in attack three, we just have more stuff. That's the way it normally goes. So this is specifically why it's working. So in fact, we see that Stefano has some uh, energy on the infestors. He has a moderate amount. This is considered really risky at this point. We even see Bomber willing to bring his SCDs, which you can do when you're getting dry. Don't worry about taking a fourth. Just try to win on the three base all-in. It's the only time you'll ever hear me advocate an all-in. So this is, um, a lot of times in these late-game situations, if you're watching GSL, you'll see players building Banelings instead of uh, Infestors. That's because the Terran is putting on a lot of pressure and there's not enough time to build the Infestors and rely on their energy count. We need something fast that does splash damage. It's a replacement for fun. So here... Yeah, 
Yep, yep. Yes, uh-huh. Oh, yes, sir. Cool. Coolio, 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 coolio. Pasta Julio. Takamichio, etc. Oh, dropping the mule for good measure. So great. We're striking our opponent right before he has hive tech. We're striking him in our graph. We're striking him right here. So what this means is that he either doesn't build infestors and dies because he certainly can't use Ultralisks or Broodlords because he just physically does not have them. Or he has to build some Infestors to stay alive. And if he has to build some Infestors, we can do round uh, attack round two and be up against lower energy Infestors, and then attack round three be up against almost no Infestors. When we watch another game of Bomber in part three, we're going to see again how difficult it is um, for the Zerg to ever get any use in the slightest out of his hive tech. Um, and it's all just about trying to bankrupt the energy. So cool. Um, let me see, how are we doing on time? It looks like... Right, you know, I actually think I might load up another little bonus game here. Um, just so we can get another look. Um, let's see, which one do I want to load up? Um, I'm going to load up a slightly different one. Um, is this the right one? I think this will be fine. This is a, a bonus game that we're going to blast through. We, we had the opportunity to look at it yesterday, but what I want you to see is what is going on from the Zerg point of view while the Terran's doing this powering. Oh, come on, king wrong button press. There we go. We have Bomber in the bottom left position. He's going to do basically the same build. And Violet is in the right position. What do you know a refinery right off the bat? What do you know an expand? Who would have thought he goes for reactor before Hellion? Well, we would have because we looked at this game already. Early third command center. We're seeing the same thing once again. But I want to come on over here to the Zerg player's point of view. I'm actually going to disable sound so that way we don't have that total fit of explosions. Super early upgrades. Total freedom to do whatever he wants. Look at this. Whoa, four Hellions instead of two. Oh, no micro necessary. We're doing the same thing back home. We're getting our very early plus one, plus one. We're getting our very early barracks, our very early third. Around the time we start 2-2, two, two, we're getting all the rest of everything. We'll even be starting our plus one vehicle weapons in a sec for our tanks. Now, what we're seeing out of Violet is an extremely aggressive mixture of units. So this is sort of opposite of the typical hive-focused player. What if he makes a whole bunch of units in the mid-game and uses it to counterattack with us? No big deal, says Bomber. Again, at the 14-minute mark, I want to note that he has... 10 tanks, 75 marines. He has 2-2. Two, two. He's going to be starting 3-3. Three, three. Chugga chugga. No care in the world for expanding. Oh, alack. Alas. We have this huge push. Doing counterattack damage down at this base. Bomber is still not going to give up in this huge push. He's going to shove in as aggressively as he can. This is the real danger of trying not to go in Fester against this bomber composition. Sure, he'll counterattack and do some damage. I mean, we lost some workers. I guess one worker. But the rest of the time, we just get into this absolutely fantastic position, and there's really not much that our opponent can do about it. I will continue to have it at times 8 speed, because this is where we start to see a lot of infestors. We start to see a lot of units. Oh, my God. God, there's so much noise. Now there's like a helicopter, a low-flying plane. Is this like the start of the zombie apocalypse? Like you're watching the daily and a zombie comes in and freaking kills me? I've actually thought that this room would be an excellent stronghold for the zombie apocalypse. I have a collection of energy drinks up there. I can just down that and I'll be in good shape. <laughs> Anyways, back to the game. So we actually glanced at this game very, very, very briefly in yesterday's uh, daily at the start. Um, but... 
we stopped watching right about now. And this is the part that I want to continue along uh, advancing forward in this segment, just as a little uh, extra bonus because we're uh, ahead of time. A little bit of extra time. We're starting to see, okay, so we see Violet built a lot of infestors, six infestors. Where are they? Okay, cool, so we have some energy. And you know what Bomber does? Bomber just waits till he has 3-3, three, three, and he's just going to continue to mount another attack again. And we're just trying to bankrupt these infestors on energy. We attack whatever expansion of his is closest. Because we have tanks we need to siege up. And Bomber just drills in. It's a very, very easy follow-up attack. Because, you know, I've been talking about how low the infestors will be on energy. They're also bound to be very, very, very low on units as well. They're going to be low on one or the other. And Bomber just continues to do attacks up here, attacks up here. I'm a little disappointed that in this game he went for this drop type play because I really feel like he didn't need to. He can just continue shoving at the front. Um, however, I'm going to open up the unit tab because this is really what's revealing. The Zergling count is starting to get dangerously low. It's starting to be just Ultralisk Infester, which against a huge Marine Tank Marauder army, I mean, we're still at 82 Marines. <laughs> It's a little bit too tough. Come on, Bomber, come on. Just gets maxed, shoves, gets maxed, shoved. Okay, in this, in this fight, this is difficult to go well for Violet unless he has a lot of lings, and he just does not have that many here. He can't really get an angle. The tanks will continue to be able to walk forward. Infestors are an excellent delay tactic, but we're starting to see that they, they too are getting a little bit lower on energy. Zerglings seem like they'll be your worst enemy. Oh, the tragedy of dealing with Zerglings. But this attack is the one that I even remember in commentary at the Lone Star Clash. A lot of people going, oh, Violet's done and he's shoved back bomber. Look at the supply difference. All you need is one large-scale engagement where you really start to hinder his infester numbers. Or more importantly, his infester energy. Dun -dun 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 so yeah, we got the chance to relook at that game. Um, and Bomber's about to make a push and just win the game, so that way I'll just end it now and head on to part number three. Um, so in part number two, we saw the sort of conclusion to this macro game. Why it's just so straightforward and easy to execute. Um, we also saw that in this attack, we're not trying to blast our way through with attack number one. We're trying to weaken him specifically by making him waste energy on infestors. If you can pick off an infestor, that's fine. Most importantly of all, just make sure everything is dealing damage. Make sure everything is shooting. You don't want that thing where like 20 marines are trying to stim and kill that. Just spread them out and shoot and kill the zerglings, uh, ultralisks, what have you. It's going to be excellent. And if your opponent tries to go Broodlord and Fester too quickly, you just kill him. The attack at 14, 16, and 18 minutes, just these follow-up attacks, crush. And hilariously enough, if you watch Bomber's games when he does this, you'll notice a surprising lack of Broodlords. Come on, wow, where, where are the blue, where, where the Broodlords come in? What, why are his opponents not going Broodlords? It's because the opponents are correctly identifying that they will literally die to this push. And I think the most compelling evidence is if you go try this on the ladder, do this push again. 14 minutes is where you should say, oh, if I'm getting maxed by 14 minutes, I'm doing good. If I'm getting maxed by 15 minutes, I'm doing okay. If I'm getting maxed at 16 minutes, then I'm playing a little bit slowly. Um, but um, so far, so good. So great, we got the chance to see in part one and two this entire strategy sort of wrapped together. And in part number three, we're going to see a completely weird looking variation for Bomber, if you're looking for some variation, that's still gonna dump right back in to the same damn thing. Ha!